This video is brought to you by Ultium. In today's episode, you will learn how to make a racing drone using Nace 32 flight controller, Emax second generation, 2600 kV motors, 30 ampere ESCs, FlySky FS i6 transmitter and receiver, 5 by 4.2 inches propellers, and the Buddha roster 230 carbon fiber frame. Before I'm going to explain how to build this racing drone, first I would like to share with you some useful information which I believe as a beginner you should know. For the last few months I have been using this quadcopter frame with different flight controllers to learn the very basics and to improve my piloting skills. Along this journey I faced so many issues, crashed my drone so many times, burned a lot of motors and damaged so many propellers. From all these issues and damages I learned a lot of new things which I have already shared with you guys in my previous videos. Just go and watch my videos on CC3D flight controller, KK2.1.5 flight controller and NACE 32 Rev6 flight controller. These flight controllers are best for the beginners. Anyways with all these flight controllers I was facing some kind of issues which were stopping me from building this racing drone. Those issues were number one drone motor switching, number two excessive vibrations and oscillations, number three drone drifting on the roll, yaw and pitch axis. The motors twitching problem I fixed by using branded motors and propellers but the vibrations and drifting issues were hard to fix. This was due to my mistake as I was flying my drone with the default PID values. So I started studying about the PID values and then finally I learned how to PID tune a quadcopter. In my last video I explained how to do PID settings for the NACE 32 flight controller and since then I'm feeling pretty confident as I'm able to fully control my quadcopter drone but still I'm not able to do the flips and rolls. So anyways after learning the basics and improving my piloting skills I decided to build myself a racing drone. Before I'm going to share with you the flight test results of my new racing drone first a few words about the sponsor of this video for helping me purchase the required components and tools. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. If you want to get started with the Ultium Designer, you can click on the first link in the description. It's a nice cloudy day and I have to complete my final tests before it's going to start training. Just look at the stability. There are no vibrations and oscillations and I don't see any drifting on the roll, pitch and yaw axis. The stability which you can see right now is just because of the PID tuning which I will explain later in this video. Now let's check the speed and the overall performance of this drone up in the air. This drone is super fast and I will have to practice more to control this mini beast. Although I am a beginner drone pilot but yet I am able to control it to some extent and this is just because of the perfect PID tuning. No humans and animals are harmed while making this video. Anyways, I continued to perform the tests but seriously I didn't find any problems in the drone itself. But there is no doubt, I am a bad drone pilot and I will have to practice for a few more days before I convert this drone into an FPV drone. For now, I will continue with these simple beginners level flights. Right now, 
I can't even think of flips and rolls. That's a pro level job. Anyways, you can see the drone is pretty stable and it's very controllable. This is really a low budget racing drone, especially for the beginners like me, which you can also convert into an FPV racing drone in the future. So if you're just starting with a racing drone, then this is the type of drone you should start with and it's very easy to build. I will share with you each and every detail. Anyways, I have been flying this racing drone for more than 10 minutes and I didn't see any motor switching, no drifting issues, no excessive vibrations and oscillations. This means my first racing drone is quite a success. So here is my drone and the flight test results are just in front of you. So if you think this is the type of the beginners level racing drone that you are searching for, then you can watch rest of the video as I'm going to explain each and every detail. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This is the 5 inch clone version of the Poodle Roaster 230 made of aluminum and carbon fiber. So if you are just starting with a racing drone then this is the type of frame you should definitely start with. I assembled this frame in around 30 minutes which is the easiest part. Let's take a look at different parts and you will get the idea how these different parts are connected together. The arms are 4mm thick while all the other plates are 2mm thick. The arms are nicely and tightly sandwiched between these two plates. I have this other plate which I will fix on the top after installing all the electronics. The recommended motors are 2300 kV to 2700 kV. The recommended ESCs are 30 ampere. And finally, the battery which is the most important part. The manufacturer recommends 3S to 4S with MH capacity from 1300 MH to 1500 mAh but it doesn't matter you can use a greater mAh battery if you need more flight time but keep in mind the battery should nicely fit on the top plate look at my old battery it's 3s and 3300 mAh and it's just not compatible with this frame it doesn't mean I can't fly this drone with this battery but it really doesn't look good at all so I purchased a new 3S LiPo battery pack and it's 1800 mAh and this is perfectly compatible with this frame. This frame is ideal for building an FPV racing drone. You can install a camera over here. I will explain this in my upcoming video. Once I learn how to control this mini beast is, this is my first time I'm building a racing drone. Anyways, another camera you can fix on the top for recording high quality HD videos. This plate is movable and this way you can adjust the camera angle. I have got these Emax second generation 2600 kV brushless motors which are compatible with 3 to 4 is LiPo battery packs and 5 to 5.5 inches propellers. These motors are lightweight. Each motor weighs around 26.6 grams. The motors with black color nuts are clockwise and the motors with red color nuts are counterclockwise. For other technical specifications read my article, you can find a link in the description. I got these 5 by 42 inches transparent tri-blade plastic clockwise and counterclockwise propellers and these are perfectly compatible with my Emax 2600 kV motors. These propellers are strong, lightweight ensures flexibility and wing stability. These are high-end propellers. Faster reaction of a high-speed performance will balanced, well-made and durable to sustain crashes. These propellers are perfect for FPV racing quadcopter drones. I will use the same Nace 32 Rev6 flight controller. 
I have already explained how to make a quadcopter drone using NACE 32 and I have also explained how to do the PID settings. I will provide links to all the related videos in the description. I have been using this Flysky FSI 6 transmitter and receiver for controlling my RC planes and quadcopter drones. So I will continue with the same transmitter and receiver. I am also going to use the same 30 MPA ESCs. Watch my video on how to make a quadcopter drone using CC3D flight controller. In that video, I have explained how to connect all the four ESCs with the distribution board. The same setup I also used with the KK 2.1.5 flight controller and also with the NACE 32 flight controller. Since I'm using the same flight controller, the same 3rd MPA ESCs and the same Flysky FSI 6 receiver, so the connections will remain exactly the same as explained in my first video on the NACE 32 flight controller based drone. What I did this time, I shifted everything from this frame to this mini frame. The distribution board and the NACE 32 flight controller are perfectly compatible with the Buddha Roaster 230. That's why I removed the cover. The arrowhead is towards the front of the drone frame. I'm going with the same motors configuration. This is motor number one. This is motor number two. This is motor number three and this is motor number four. Motor number one and motor number three will be spinning in the clockwise direction while the motor number two and motor number four will be spinning in the counterclockwise direction. So motor 1 is connected with the channel 1, motor 2 with the channel 2, motor 3 with the channel 3 and motor 4 with the channel 4. The 6 channels of the Flysky receiver are connected with the 6 channels of the NACE 32 flight controller. Simply connect them in the same order. These are the same 30 MPA ESCs. This time I just removed the yellow color shrink tubes and directly soldered the motor wires. Is this time I'm using a new frame and new motors so I did the motors calibration the same way as I did for the 1400 kb motors. As usual, I'm going to start with the default PID settings and let's see if there are any vibrations, oscillations and drifting on the yaw, pitch and roll axis. My racing drone is ready for its first test using the default PID settings. This is simply amazing. I don't see any vibrations and oscillations but the drone is drifting a lot on the roll axis. And this is something which I have to fix. The drone is not too sensitive to the control sticks and this is because I'm using lower RC rate values. Since the item or the integral take care of the drifting issues and as my drone is drifting on the roll axis, so that's why I increase the roll value from 40 to 50 in the integral column. Let's go ahead and check if it has made any difference. Perfect. Seems like I'm going in the right direction. The drone drifting has decreased a lot and now the drone is quite controllable. But still I can see some drifting. So let's go ahead and increase the value. This time I increase the value to 60. It's really improved but still I'm not satisfied. I have to play with the P term and I term values. This time I'm going to check my drone with this big battery. You can see maximum of its weight is on the big side. I'm doing this test to check if the D term is doing its job. 
This is simply amazing that DTERM is doing its job since the CG is completely off so that's why there are vibrations as the motors are trying hard to maintain the level and this will definitely heat up the motors. A quick tip for you guys, whenever you fly your drone first check the CG and you will have an amazing flight experience. So my DTERM values are good and I'm not going to change those values. These are the final PID values which works best with the NACE32 and PUDA Roaster 230 frame. This time I'm going to some open place and let's see if I can control this mini beast as this is my first time flying a racing drone. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.